Why is everyone being mean to Trevor Zegris? What do the Kings playoff hopes look like today? And why are we all New Jersey Devil fans? We're going to talk about all of that on today's episode of Locked On Los Angeles Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Locked on Los Angeles Kings. If you're watching on YouTube, you can kind of see the dog in the background. She's a little blurry, but she's uh, joining the show today. This is Locked on Los Angeles Kings. My name is Sarah Avampato, host of this show. And as always, I'm excited to be here with you talking all about the Los Angeles Kings. On today's show, we preview tonight's matchup against the Anaheim Ducks. It's a game that, you know, we thought maybe was going to be meaningful because the Ducks would also sort of be in the chase, given how they sort of started the season hot. Uh, instead, it's just meaningful for us. So on today's show, we've got J.D. Hernandez from Locked on Ducks to give us the lowdown on what our fine feathered frenemies have been up to. So without further ado, let's turn it over to me and to Jason to talk about tonight's upcoming game against the Anaheim Ducks. Troy Terry had two goals yesterday, a three points performance. And right now Troy Terry has 63 points. Um, what are you most impressed by with Troy Terry this season? Um, I mean, just the fact that he, I feel like it's like he heard all the people being like, this dude's a bust, and he took that personally and has shown that he actually is a good hockey player this year. Remember last season when he was healthy scratched a couple oh, times? Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. why everyone was like, this dude's a bust. Yeah, yeah. Funny how times have changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what has not changed is the coach of the Ducks. It is Dallas Eakins, and it will be Dallas Eakins next season as well. And I wanted to get your take on this because I brought this up very briefly yesterday and wanted to get your take on this. Mm -hmm. So last night I didn't actually watch the game because I was at the game. Well, you know what I mean? I didn't watch the TV. Yeah, I was going to say, you know hang on. I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh-huh. <laughs> So the TV broadcast on Valley Sports SoCal apparently showed Dallas Eakins talking and then uh, Hazy, Brian Hayward, mm -hmm. he brought up that Eakins thinks, get this, that Zegers has, quote, hit a wall, quote, that he looks tired, and quote, that he looks frail. I kid you not. That that was said. What do you make of what Dallas Eakin said about his young budding star? Well, a it's certainly a poor choice of words. Frail, even if even if Trevor Zegers is like the skinniest hockey player, he still is like not frail. Um, it's a very unartfully phrased criticism, but b it's always frustrating because sometimes we want coaches, we want to hear. You know, as someone who has interviewed coaches and, you know, you always want that quote. You always want, like, you see a guy turn the puck over six times in a game and you just want the coach to be like, I need Billy to stop turning the puck over. Like, you want the honesty from them. But this is the flip side of it, of you get that quote from the coach and you're like, oh, bud, you shouldn't have said that. Like, why are you calling out Trevor Zegers in the media? I don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, no, that that is like... Unless Trevor Zegers has some sort of like, this is how you motivate him by like talking crap about him in public. And then he's going to respond. I don't, I, um, I don't know, man. <laughs> you just brought up something that I kind of forgot about was remember when, before the season even started, before this was around the rookie camp in mm -hmm. Arizona mm -hmm. and we were covering that. And remember how we talked about Zegers saying that, oh, I might not even make the team. And there was those quotes and there was those mm -hmm. rumors, which is why I said what I said about mm -hmm. Zegris mm -hmm. not playing as many games. I mean, he, I mean, that was kind of dumb of me to say, but at the same time, it was slightly tongue in cheek. Mm -hmm. Dallas Eakins kind of called out his player and Zegris had a good camp and he had a good preseason and he should have been starting top liners 
No, he started he started off third line. Started the season. And now he's moved up. And you want Zegers to eventually be your first line center. Right. Same kind of stuff certainly doesn't help his cause. Right. I don't want to say it's a damning quote. It looks worse that that quote came out during the game. Mm-hmm. It apparently came out during the first intermission. And then Zegers goes and scores a goal in the third period. What makes it worse, this was said during the season. There's still five games left, and you're saying this about your start, and now more people are hearing about this quote. It's just not a good look, is it? No. It's big no there. He should know better. Dallas Eakins has been around this game for long enough that he should know better. But for whatever yeah. reason, he has thought this was an appropriate tactic to take. Yeah, and this isn't the first time that Zegers has been targeted, except now by his own coach. Uh, you recall what happened earlier this month with the Tyson Nash bull duty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't think of a graceful way to put it, <laughs> but Tyson Nash didn't like Zegers' hot dogging and he was going to get punched in the mouth and all that stuff. So for Egan to say that, it it's a worse optic because it's on top of what was said earlier this month about players like that getting punched in the mouth and getting tackled and all this stuff. It It's really got, not a good look. I would think it, it's got to it's got to affect Zegris, right? Oh, you yeah, got to think about the I, poor kid. Yeah, I mean, also, while we're here, while we're on the subject, what was up with that, like, weirdo quote from Pat Verbeek that was like, we've talked with Trevor and make sure he understands to respect the game or whatever. Like, what was up with that? Yeah, that actually, it gives me a little bit less confidence in Pat Verbeek. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is kind of like a half, hearted statement there's not a whole lot that you can say but i don't think that was it right and this just kind of adds to stunting his growth Mm -hmm. which which can't be good for his confidence and it can't be good like you want to play for a gm and for a coach that has full confidence in you and right now it sounds like he just doesn't have a hundred percent support from either his coach or his general manager right now that's the optics of it. Yeah. Yeah. That was so weird. And also, I mean, the funny thing is that like one of the things that, you know, Sonny Milano, who spent, you know, years in Columbus's system being kind of forgotten and just like didn't really fit there because he does play, you know, a kind of creative, funky game. And then he goes to Anaheim and is suddenly like blossoming and it's like oh great he's gone to this team this organization that's letting him be him it's pairing him with other young you know creative players and then now all this nonsense is happening like the statement from pat verbeek all he needed to say was like we support trevor zegris in playing the game that he the way he you know some blah 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 bs about like he's a good teammate and we appreciate what trevor brings to the team thank you good night like that's all you have to say (laughs) That was that was all. That was all he had to say. We are going to head into the first intermission, but let's talk about Bet Online, which is where the game starts. And I don't know, you're not much of a gambler, right? I know. No, not not a not a gambling person. Well, I mean, once upon a time I was a gambling person. Not so much with the sports, although if I put my money where my mouth was on the University of Denver Pioneers, yeah. I, I could have made a lot of money there. I'm just saying, who called it? You did. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I'd put some money there. I wish I had gone to Bet Online, which has more props, odds, and lines than ever before. And you know what they have now? They have the NBA playoffs. Some team from Chicago, they're in it, the Bulls. And you also have the Stanley Cup playoffs, which, by the way, it looks like the Kings are going to be in. Woo woo. <laughs> so if you want to check out the latest odds and lines on the Stanley Cup playoffs and the NBA playoffs, then use your little device, your mobile device, or your laptop, and go to Bet Online, which is where the game starts. And by the way, Bet Online is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. And Sarah, what should they do? Eat responsibly. Yeah, and gamble responsibly. 
So we talked about the Ducks and all that. I mean, I didn't talk about the Ducks playoff hopes because there are none, but I do want to talk about the Kings playoff hopes because there was a very big final score that happened Monday night. And this is of importance to you. You've got to be thrilled about this. I you... I yeah. currently will will like I will give every player on the New Jersey Devils like five dollars or something. Um <laughs> because they if if vegas misses the playoffs by like two points because they lost this game (laughs) like i i i i I just tweeted that i will i promise i will not say anything bad about new jersey for like the next week um for people who who aren't scoreboard watching like i am the kings obviously are trying to hold off Vegas from jumping back into the playoff picture uh, because Vegas's most likely spot would be to knock the Kings out because the central division is going to send five teams because of course they are. And so basically every game is crucial. And on Monday night, uh, the golden Knights lost three to two to the New Jersey devils. So thanks New Jersey. I'm a temporary devils fan. Wait, 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 wait. I, I have to pause. There's there's a couple things there. First off, you said New Jersey. Do you mean the New Jersey Devils or the state of New Jersey? Uh both. <laughs> really? Wow, that that's some big that's some bold talk right there. And I guess the other side of it, this puts the Kings kind of in the catbird seat where they actually don't have to win every game out. In fact, now that the Kings have some breathing room. Um, you got to think that they'd get in now, right? It's looking that good. Listen, I still don't trust this team any further than I can throw any of them. So I will not believe that they are in the playoffs until they have that little X next to their name. This is like <laughs> the reverse of like the years, like the years the Kings didn't make the playoffs after having that kind of briefly dominant cycle when they won the Stanley Cups and everything. And the joke on hockey Twitter was always like, yeah, the Kings are out of the playoffs, but, you know, day one of the playoffs, the Kings are just going to like, you know, Kool-Aid man style burst through the door and suddenly they're back in the playoffs somehow. Like no one believed they weren't going to make it until they weren't there. And so, you know, I kind of have the reverse of that of, I am not like, I'm, I'm obviously, I've been on the, this team can make the playoffs beat since the beginning of the season like obviously it is what i want it is what i think and know that they can do but i'm not going to believe it (laughs) until it's actually there and i have proven all season long that anytime i get too confident about the kings they disappoint me so i i just am like cautiously optimistic let's put it that way well they're not exactly like the song buttercup where you get raised up and then let down it's not exactly been that way for the Kings all season. They've had some very good games and looking at their schedule, none of these teams spark any concern. No. I mean, the Ducks, the Ducks twice. And then you've got Seattle. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. They're, They're a team that exists, right? Allegedly. I mean, granted they did beat the Ottawa Senators, but that's the Ottawa Senators. A lot of teams right. could beat the Ottawa Senators that, right yeah, now. Yeah, that's also a team that allegedly exists. Yeah. And who, oh, they're also playing Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they finish against the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> hey, what if it's the Canucks that are chasing the Kings at that point? I know that's extremely unlikely. Although the Canucks, you know, they're kind of on a streak right now, but they're also too far behind, I think to catch the kings yeah i i think so but it's nice to see them try it is and it's nice to see the bruce boudreaux effect Mm -hmm. working out pretty well in vancouver yeah but going back to the kings right now they've got some reinforcements that are coming back and we also saw quentin byfield wearing a purple jersey which meant a healthy scratch. We also saw some players in red jerseys recently. They're back out on the ice, non-contact right now. But uh, what's the status of the injured Kings right now? Oh, they're all dead. 
No. Um, <laughs> so Drew Doughty, they confirmed, is out for the rest of the season with whatever happened to his wrist. He had to have surgery, so he he's he's done. Um, Mikey Anderson, I believe, is getting close to coming back. Um, not quite ready yet, but uh, Todd McClellan, I think, is hopeful that he will get in a game uh, before the end of the season. What's his name? Brendan Lemieux just came back, although he's been healthy scratched as well, which is fine. Um, Dustin Brown just came back and scored a goal uh, in in his last game uh, against uh, Columbus, which I think that Dustin Brown having to take some time off because he hurt himself in what Alex Faust, the Kings uh, play-by-play guy, described on TV in like an incredibly gruesome way that I don't even like thinking about. Um, But Dustin Brown looks like a new player having to, you know, he he looks so much better in these past couple games than he did in any game that he played this season so far. And I'm like, man, if he looked like this all season, like people wouldn't be complaining so much about him, but he's back and looks fine. Uh, Andreas Athanasiu just came back from being injured. I th- I mean, he gets hurt every time you look at him for too long. So I'm afraid of what's going to happen. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's the most useful, significant players updates. Yeah. yeah. And and by the way, uh, for the record, getting to hear the injury in person, getting to hear that from Alex Faust himself. <laughs> Yeah, that that was something. No, that was horrific. Yeah, I'll I'll just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. I'll, yeah. Ooh. Anyway, I, t- I, I tweet I tweeted the quote on um the Locked On Kings Twitter. If you are curious, um, <laughs> just just scroll back a couple of days. Yeah, that's all. That, that's all. Yeah. But going back to the reinforcements coming back, if Mikey Anderson does come back before the playoffs how big would that be for the kings in general to have just that piece back yeah i mean i think that he he's a very like underrated good part of this team uh he you know obviously has been taking on first pairing minutes with drew dowdy he certainly had some growing pains this season there were some times where i was like ooh, you know that that was rough you're trying to do too much there kid uh but he is, you know, one of the more experienced defensemen on this team at this point. Um, and I mean, I feel like the biggest question is if he comes back, who gets pushed out of the lineup? Because you can't take out Sean Dursey. Uh, Jordan right. Spence, honestly, the way he has played, I I can't justify taking him out. Um, you know, Troy Stetcher, I think, was a scratch recently. Uh, uh, what's his name? Tobias Bjornfoot has been a healthy scratch recently. Like, as we're getting bodies back, you're sort of running into the problem of being like, oh, well, now we have too many and the kids are good. We can't not play them. But I think, you know, a- adding Mikey Anderson, if he can get back up to speed with any, you know, quickness whatsoever, um, you know, Matt Roy took a couple games to kind of get back into it. I would expect Mikey Anderson would need a little while to sort of get back up to speed too. But I think it'd be great for the team. I don't know how it's going to change like the complexion of, or the makeup of the defense for the team. Which goes into the final part that I want to talk about as far as the Kings before we head to our second intermission. And that has to do with players that could come down. You just mentioned, I'll agree with you that Jordan Spence has been a pleasant surprise for the Kings. I mean, he looked great in Ontario. He looks really good with the Los Angeles Kings right now, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it'd be nice to have him back in Ontario, but I understand why they'd keep him in LA. Um, what do you think would be the strategy here as far as trying to manage who goes to LA and who goes to Ontario? Because you got to think about that as well. Yeah. I mean, I know that they obviously they did the whole paper transaction thing to make Jordan Spence eligible for the rain uh, for the playoffs. Sean Dersey, they didn't. So Dersey has to stay. Um, yep. you know, I, I, I have the feeling that Jordan Spence is up with the Kings until the Kings are out of the playoffs. And, you know, I think at that point they would return him to the rain, but it feels like even if they end up taking him out of the roster, like out of the lineup, because people get healthy, um, you know, it, it, it seems like they're just going to keep him, which stinks for the rain. Um, he was a really important player there, but I'm kind of having a hard time seeing them 
being like, all right, cool. Thanks for the hard work. Bye. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, they didn't do that with Tobias Bjornfoot. Uh, Bjornfoot did not get paper transactions, so he would not be eligible. But I know that Spence would be eligible. Mm-hmm. And a lot of forwards would be eligible, and some of them could come back. Velarde, he can come back. Kupari could come back, mm-hmm. and so could Quentin Byfield. I know a lot of Kings fans are high on Byfield, but he could very potentially, and I, I think he probably will come back to Ontario. Yeah, uh, I, crack, I would... Right? Yeah, I, I would think so at, at some point. I mean, I kind of feel like, and I, I know that I'm contradicting something that I've said previously on the show of, man, you know, what do the Kings need black aces for? Like the rain are right there. They don't have a problem if they need to call people up. But I kind of feel like all of those guys, you know, Byfield, Kupari, might just stay with the Kings until the Kings are done. And then I'll go back to the rain. It it just, I feel like it just depends on, you know, Byfield's obviously been a scratch uh, recently. Uh, velarde has been a scratch. So I think it comes down to, you know, does the organization want them playing or do they think it's more valuable that they, you know, sit and watch and take in the NHL game and, you know, try to get their minds around it or whatever. Um, and I, I, they have made such bizarre decisions with both of those players this season that, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking anymore. I don't know either. I mean, I would I, selfishly, I would love to see those guys come back to Ontario, mm-hmm. but and see them play against the goals. But I also know if that happens, they're probably going to sweep San Diego two games to none, and it'll be a quick trip. Actually, there's that to think about too. It could be a quick two games. They could go back to LA, true, true, and take that experience. Yeah, you know that's not a bad a bad point because of that very brief play in round, you could move guys back and forth a whole lot easier. Yep. And I believe there's no limits to that in the playoffs, actually. I think, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would have to research that more carefully, but let's talk about RockAuto.com briefly. And Sarah, I know you can vouch for a rock auto. I mean, you, you've seen my car. <laughs> it exists. Yeah. And what were you perplexed about as far as my car? I mean, so many things about your car perplex me. Okay. (laughs) I'm thinking of one in particular. Yeah. Uh, I'll, what, what did you say about my wipers? Well, they're falling apart. Well, not anymore because you went to rockauto.com. I did. Didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what will happen if you go to rockauto.com? you will be able to very easily find parts for your car or your truck at reliably low prices. And you know, they've been family owned and operated for over two decades. Indeed they have. Yeah. They've been around as long as the Toronto Maple Leafs playoff utility streak, (laughs) which is now at 18 years, but rock auto has been around longer than that. So if you want to check out, all the parts that your car will ever need, head to rockauto.com. And what should they type in the how did you hear about us box? They should write the words locked on in that box. Yeah. Once again, that is rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Rock Auto. Welcome back to the podcast that asks, is In-N-Out really the best hamburger in all of Southern California? It is Locked On SoCal Hockey. I'm J.D. Hernandez, and that's Sarah Avampato. That sounds like fighting words. Well, I mean, there are people here that swear that there's better burgers than In-N-Out, and I think they're wrong, but they're out there. They exist. I've seen it on Twitter recently for whatever reason that In-N-Out isn't the best burger in SoCal, and that, yes, people still say their fries are trash. I mean, you've been out here more times than I can count. Is In-N-Out, in your mind, the best burger here? Well, I can't say that I've had the competition, so I can't reliably Ah. say it is the best burger. I don't know what I'm comparing it against, but it is a pretty darn good burger. It is. I think what sets it apart is the menu's simple and the price. You can't beat that kind of price point. I mean, of course not. Yeah, I mean, why would you spend $12 on a burger? 
Why? You know, yes, you can. could save anyway. Um, so we have a game coming up tonight at Honda Center where yours truly will be there. And I will just come out and say this right now. I will be dressed in some locked on gear, but also I'm going to be wearing my Patos de Anaheim jersey because it's El Capitan, Ryan Getzloff. It's, he's coming up to the close of a fantastic career, only a handful of games left. Um, yeah, Getz, he's retiring. This will be his last go round against the Kings. I mean, what's your recollections about Getzy and what do you think about all all of the hoopla and, and all that stuff? Just your thoughts on Ryan Getzloff. Um, I mean, he he's one of those players where like you hate him, but also you would love him on your team. I mean, I, you know, I feel I feel it the same way about, you know, like Corey Perry even. Um, hate him. Hate him very much. But there's a reason that guys like you know, Getzloff and Perry have been so effective throughout their whole careers. So it's, I, you know, I, I, we talked about it on the national show a couple weeks ago, whenever he first announced that he's, he's retiring. And, you know, I, I think my first thought is that I'm glad he's getting to go out on his terms and that he is getting to kind of say, yeah, I'm making the decision that I'm done instead of, you know, compare him to his teammate, uh, Ryan Kessler, who, didn't get to make that choice he basically was told your body cannot handle this anymore like you can't play and you know did had a similar you know long career of being incredibly irritating but that kind of guy who if he was on your team you'd love him uh and it's good at least that gets off is getting to say like yeah i wish i could i wish i could but i'm going out with my skates on and gonna miss that rivalry uh you know it's like all those guys from the classic rivalry years of each of these teams at the height of california hockey when the kings the sharks and the ducks all basically ruled the pacific division yeah um you know there there aren't that many of them left and i i hope that jonathan quick gets to punch him like one last time in like the kidneys for old time's sake because that's what happens he punches out of love um but yeah it's i i expect nothing less than the intense rivalry they've always had in these last couple games you know now that you mentioned that i kind of hope like i hope it's like a safe fight and there's not not a lot of vitriol but just right. for all time sake wouldn't it be hilariously like just be hilarious or funny to see kind of getzloff and dustin brown just kind of like have like a light fight, you know, like maybe just like a roughing, like oh yeah. Roughing. I mean, I'm sure they will. Like that's just what they do. Is you know, they're 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 yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. gonna happen. They they've they've battled in the past. I mean, mm-hmm. Dustin Brown was the longtime captain of the Kings, and Gesloff is still the captain. You know, I think about that rivalry between those two because I think they both came up around the same time. Mm-hmm. There's that iconic picture that you referenced on the mm-hmm. national show. I, I did watch that locked or listen to that locked on NHL. You guys referenced the photo. Yes, because it's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know what's more hilarious, like that they all had hair or the frosted tips. Oh, it's the frosted tips, definitely. For sure. Oh, for sure. The fact that they have hair is just a fact about them. But the frosted tips was a choice that they made. Well, I, okay, true. It was a choice. I is don't this think conversation was... going to end with you revealing that you had frosted tips at some point in time? Because I really hope it does. I've never had frosted tips. All right. However. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there's a reason for this. So I actually used to be a theater major at one point in my life. Mm -hmm. And my hair was a lighter color, Mm -hmm. but not tipped. I I didn't go that far. Fine. Well, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just not going to go that far. Apologize. Apologies to everyone that still has frosted tips out there. And if you still have frosted tips, um, Smash Mouth is calling. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. Um, Let's have some fun here. And... I'm going to make a prediction on Tuesday, Tuesday's game that I'm going to go to. Mm-hmm. I think the Kings are going to be victorious on this game. The Kings have too much to play for. The Anaheim Ducks just won against Columbus. They're not going to win two in a row. So I'm going to say Kings 
six to four, but Troy Terry scores a goal. And this game means much more for the Kings than it does for the Ducks. So Kings will win it six to four. And knowing Dallas Eakins, he'll probably start John Gibson on this game, which means John Gibson will have his 21st consecutive game of giving up three or more goals. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's that's a horrible stat. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to bring this up. Ryan Getzloff did fight Ryan Kessler once, by the way. Nice. Back in 2008 when Kess was a member of the Canucks. So just wanted to get that out there. <laughs> nice. Uh, do you dare make a prediction on Tuesday's game? This is one of those, like, what the heart wants versus what the head wants sort of thing. Because, again, as has been established all season long, when I get confident about the Kings winning, they're like, ha, bet. And so then they lose. So, like the heart wants to go with what I think is the lightly out likely outcome, which is Kings win. I also think it's going to be kind of high scoring, but I'd go like, you know, four, two or something, but you know, for tradition's sake, I've got to say the ducks are going to win because every time I do the opposite, <laughs> the Kings lose. And then everyone, all the listeners get mad at me because they're like, you know that you like i'm not a superstitious person at all but everyone else in hockey is so i i have to like acquiesce to other people's superstitions i guess so what are you talking about we're not that superstitious yes you are yes you are (laughs) so what are you officially going to say as your prediction i mean the official prediction is like uh, it feels so gross to say four two ducks but like I gotta, I gotta go with the superstition. This won't be it because we're going to chat again later this week. We're going to chat next month because we got some minor league hockey to talk about. We do. It looks looks like our teams might be playing each other in the AHL playoffs. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So before we head off, where can the fine folks find you on the socials and all your work? So you can find me on Twitter at Right Said Sarah. The show's on Twitter at Locked On LA Kings. Uh, you can also hear me on Wednesdays on Locked On NHL, where we talk all about the goings on in the Western Conference. Uh, those shows all available wherever you get your podcasts, and both are also uh, on YouTube as well. And you could find me on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. And you could occasionally find me at the Pond or Staples Center or Toyota Arena or Pachanga Arena. You could find me wherever. Uh, the show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks once again. Sarah, thank you so much for doing this crossover in ahead of tonight's matchup. It's going to be a fun one. I mean, for a given definition of fun, yes. It's Kings and Ducks. It'll always, and it's Getsy's final games. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Thank you once again. And thanks to all of you for listening. I greatly appreciate all of you listening. Uh, don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, et cetera, et cetera. And I talked about where my show can be found. And I just want to say thanks to all of you that I met over the weekend. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are great. Yeah. On behalf of Sir and myself, for Locked on SoCal Hockey, I'm J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. 